In whatever form ghosts manifest themselves, none is more terrifying than what is called the elemental. This type of spirit is said to exist near Burr in County Offaly, where it inhabits Lep Castle. The elemental is a frightening phantasm from the beyond that envelops those who experience it in its malignant force. The ghost is so horrifying its hauntings bring an overwhelming sense of evil and deep-rooted fear. And in one remarkable recorded instance, a witness had an intimate experience with this horrifying apparition. She felt the touch of the appalling thing, known at Lep as It. Built in the 14th century, Lep is said to be the most haunted castle in Ireland. As if the very stones were rejecting human habitation, the castle lay in ruins for years. Tall and lonely, the fortress had a ghostly reputation so strong that local people avoided it at night. Completely gutted by fire, Lep was boarded up, its gates padlocked for over 70 years. But from across the fields, late at night, locals would describe seeing the windows at the top of the castle light up for a few seconds, as if many candles had been brought into the room. When the elemental haunts the castle, the temperature suddenly falls. There is a suffocating, sickly sweet odour and an overwhelming sense of dread. The vile elemental it seems to have been born out of a long and turbulent history of Lep. And this room has been a witness to its ruthless past. It is known as the Bloody Chapel, after a shocking murder that was done on this very spot over 400 years ago. Lep was then a stronghold of the original owners, the powerful O'Carroll family. They were Irish princes, chieftains of the area. Lep was an impregnable fortress, impervious to ferocious attack. But within the O'Carroll family itself, murderous treachery arose. On the death of the chieftain Mulrooney O'Carroll, in 1532, a fierce rivalry for the leadership erupted among the family. Brother opposed brother in a bitter contest for power. One brother was a priest, his opponent another brother named Tig. One night in the castle chapel, the O'Carroll priest was saying mass for a group of his family. As he was chanting the holy rites, the door of the chapel opened and his rival brother Tig burst in. Tig lunged forward with his sword, fatally wounding his brother. The butchered priest fell across the altar and died. The heinous act of brother killing brother and the blasphemy of a sacred mass cut short by evil sent an echo of misery ringing round the walls of Lep Castle. The sacrilegious murder of the O'Carroll priest may be one cause of the castle's haunting, but another source of evil was found here at Lep, an evil so foul that it may well have compounded and nurtured the curse of the elemental spirit, it. The ghastly secret was discovered here. It is called an oubliette, a name used to describe a hidden dungeon. It means a little place of forgetting. 
and those who were forgotten within these walls suffered unimaginable misery and pain until death. Lep's oubliette is a little room with a drop floor off the bloody chapel. Prisoners from clan wars or family enemies would be pushed into the room to fall through the floor and land on a spike eight feet below. Prisoners not lucky enough to die quickly on the spike faced gradual starvation in a doorless room while the sound of merriment and the aroma of food drifted up from the rooms below. A narrow window let the prisoners watch those who came and went in freedom at the castle. At the turn of the last century, workers were given the task of clearing the oubliette. They made a hideous discovery. Human skeletons lay piled on top of each other. Three cartloads of bones were removed. Another chilling thought. Among the bones, the workmen found this pocket watch, manufactured in the 1840s. Was the dungeon still in use then? It was shortly after the gruesome discovery within Lep's oubliette that a psychic disturbance caused the elemental it to emerge. In 1659, the ownership of Lep Castle passed in marriage from the O'Carroll family to an English family, the Darbys. In the possession of the Darbys, Lep became a family home. It was improved and extended, the gardens landscaped, and a full staff employed to maintain it. By the late 19th century, descendants Jonathan and Mildred Darby looked forward to bringing their family up at Lep. As was the fashion of the day, Mildred Darby was interested in the occult. Little did she know that her innocent dabbling would bring her face to face with it. Because of its bloody associations, Leopard always had a reputation for being haunted. Shall we begin? Nevertheless, Mildred naively toyed with magic. As if sensing a call from the daylight world, the dormant elemental awakened with ferocity. In 1908, Mildred wrote an article for the journal The Occult Review, describing her ordeal at the hands of the terrifying manifestation that infested Lep. I was standing in the gallery, looking down to the main hall, when I felt somebody put a hand on my shoulder. The thing was about the size of a sheep. Thin, gaunt and shadowy in parts. It, its face was human, or to be more accurate, inhuman in its vileness. Its lustreless eyes, which seemed half decomposed in black cavities, stared into mine. The horrible smell, which had before offended my nostrils only a hundred times more intensified, came up into my face, filling me with a deadly nausea. It was the smell of a decomposing corpse. The elemental it is thought to be a primitive ghost. It is a manifestation which is believed to occur mainly in country areas and to attach itself to a particular place. It is often malevolent and terrifying and it is unpredictable. Why did this elemental inhabit Lep? Could it have been the combined horrors of the bloody O'Carroll murder and all those lost, 
Dead souls walled up in the oubliette, drifting in despair to death? Whatever it may have been after Mrs. Darby's experiments with the black arts, the castle was never the same again. Hauntings plagued Lep, leaving a sinister air throughout the castle. The Darbys stubbornly remained at Lep, but in 1922 the castle suffered another misfortune when, as the home of an English family, it became the target of the Irish struggle for independence. The castle was destroyed by bombs and completely looted. Nothing but a burned-out shell remained. The Darbys were driven out. Eventually, in the 1970s, Lep was bought by an Australian who had links with the area. At this time, a mystic, a white witch from Mexico, was brought in to exorcise the castle. After spending many hours in the bloody chapel, the mystic explained that the spirits at Lep were no longer malevolent, but they wished to remain there. Six years ago, Sean Ryan and his wife Anne bought the castle. A complete ruin. When they arrived, the family is making it habitable again. In the meantime, they live in the castle gatehouse with their young daughter. When Sean and Anne Ryan bought Lep, they knew they were taking on a castle with a troubled history. You and Sean have been here for five years now. Five years, yeah. Turning a pretty grim ruin into a home. Mm -hmm. Tell me, have you had any supernatural experiences? Well, shortly after we arrived here, Sean began working on the building. He had an unfortunate accident and he broke his kneecap, which actually had to be removed and it set us back about a year with the work. When the kneecap repaired, he started to work again. And he had another accident and broke his ankle. And we began to think that we weren't really wanted here, there was something going on. But um, we've overcome that now and we're back restoring the building again. So we're, we're happy to share the place with whatever hey, spirits hey. are here. In 1991, Lep's walls echoed to an unfamiliar sound, laughter. Friends and family gathered in the chapel to witness the christening of Sean and Anne's young daughter, Kira. Strewn with flowers and lit by candles, the chapel was filled with smiling faces. We had a marvellous day, all our friends in great atmosphere, so we think we've laid to rest anything that might have happened previously. After the ceremony, every guest noted how even though there was a strong wind blowing in from the fields through the open windows, the candles barely flickered and not one blew out. If Lep's troubled spirits are unwilling to leave, let us hope that at least they have found peace. <laughs>